over the top 18 inches or any 18 inches of them, foot and a half, they, they will burst into fire because the outside layer is zirconium and zirconium when exposed to air it explodes it burns it burns not not a nuclear explosion but fire and if you got fire on the outside cladding the zirconium around these pellets which are so radioactively hot it's going to go into the atmosphere and you can't suck it back you can't so the NRC, uh, in its studies, you know, it, it describes the potential for contamination, and I don't remember the number, but it's like thousands of square miles, thousands. I mean, our, our prevailing winds blow south. So if you had your normal wind pattern and you had a fire in the uh, spent fuel pool spewing out this stuff into the atmosphere, it would it would drift downwind 90 miles as the crow flies to Santa Barbara, what, 200 or so to the Los Angeles area. Some of it would drift over into Nevada. So that's the biggest danger. And so that's why there is something to rejoice about the closure of the plant. At least we won't have that going forever. But it's there now. And Mothers for Peace is very concerned about the remaining years of operation the pg and &E's planning. So we, we have made our case for shutdown earlier than, than 2024, specifically with the um, California uh, Public Utilities Commission. We made the arguments with our excellent lawyer, Sabrina Venskis, that the plant could close in 2020 and still any necessary proportion of the energy that might need to be replaced, which would be a small part of it, um, could easily be replaced with renewable energy sources. They're coming online all the time, and without doubt by 2020 that they would be available. Again, again, the people that don't want the plant to close, there are still people advocating don't shut it, but that's a done deal. There's nothing they can do. that. I don't know why they keep saying that. That's hopeless because PG&E has withdrawn its uh, license, its application to renew. At one point, they wanted to operate an extra 20 years to 2044 and 2045. Holy cow! They filed that one in 2009 and Mothers for Peace. That's what that's what we did. We raised money and paid the lawyers and got the expert testimony from 2009 to. June 20th of 2016 when PG&E announced they didn't want that license renewal. That's what Mothers for Peace was doing, opposing license renewal. And once PG&E committed to shutting it down at the end of current licenses, our mission changed to influencing things if possible to get it to shut down sooner because an operating nuke is more dangerous than a closed one. And uh, the other, and then the other part of our mission is to influence agencies, events, and PG&E as much as we can so that the shutdown happens as safely as possible and so that the de decommissioning process is done as sensibly and safely as possible. There are a lot of ways to screw up decommissioning. <laughs> so that's what this panel is supposed to be about, to give, because the citizens of this county, um, what happens when other uh, nuclear power plants shut down is there. there's a lot of contentiousness in the communities. And so PG&E, looking at other communities where the plants have shut down and how, what huge, huge struggles came out of that, <clears throat> especially down at San Onofre. The, they, oh. I'm sorry. Um, so maybe restart. This yeah. Uh, yeah. When when nuclear plants shut down, they're it, almost inevitably because there are two sides. There are people who say we need this nuclear power plant. It puts so much money into our community. You know, it provides jobs. Um, they put a lot of money into the tax base. All that's true. And it's going to shut down, and we and it puts a lot of money into the schools. But we knew all along that it was going to shut down at some point, and so 
but now the time has come. It's like uh, time to pay the piper. So um, what PG&E wants to do is to make this decommissioning process as smooth, go as smoothly as it, as it can with the input of citizens from a wide variety of sectors in the county. So this uh, panel or committee is comprised of 11 people from, let's see, there's, and each person is a representative, a private representative. I'm not there representing Mothers for Peace. But my private opinions happen to coincide with the policies of Mothers for Peace. Um, and I also am on the uh, core team of the Sierra Club um, Nuclear Free Campaign. And so we, I want to coordinate the Sierra Club policy with it, too. So my interest here is in um, the safest way to store the nuclear waste that we are going to have on this coastline for the foreseeable future. One thing we didn't mention was that that nuclear waste that's inside of the spent fuel pools has to stay there for at seven to ten years after they take it out of the reactor because it's so hot and so radioactive. After seven to ten years, they can remove it and put it into what's called dry cask storage. Dry cask storage is taking place over there at Diablo Canyon right now. They have 49 ca casks uh, filled with uh, nuclear waste that's older and cooler. It's still radioactive. It's not as radioactive as the stuff in the spent fuel pools. But as of right now, they have 49 canisters. Each of those 49 canisters has 32 fuel rods in it. The fuel rods are the radioactive part. The kind of canisters that we are using over at our dry cask storage, we are looking at very, very closely. There is a lot of information out right now that there are much safer canisters that can be used. The ones that we have right now are made of stainless steel. They're a half an inch thick, and and then there are the control or the rods that are in there that are in an aluminum basket that sit in there. That canister is uh, filled with helium which is an inert gas, and then the top is welded shut. Then it's placed inside of a thing called an overpack that is two inch, or I mean two feet of concrete um, all the way around. Um, and in that two feet of concrete embedded are two plates of steel, not stainless steel, but regular steel. Uh, one on the outside and one on the inside of the, the circumference of that overpack. And then they lower that uh, canister down into the pack. And then the way that it's cooled so that it doesn't burn is that air, it's air cooled. The air goes in through the bottom and out through the top. It's vented like that, releasing small amounts of radiation all the time. But those canisters are going to be there. Now, within seven to ten years after the closure of the plant, they'll have all of the spent fuel out of the pools and into the, into the canisters. What we are looking for, what I am looking for as a member of the panel, is to investigate the very, very safest way to store that nuclear waste out on earthquake vaults, um, vulnerable to um, terrorist attack uh, because right now they look like big um, bowling pins kind of. They're huge. They're uh, around 20 feet in diameter and about 24 feet tall, these big uh, cement casks. You can look online and see photos of them. Um, it's very interesting. Um, and they're lined up in rows. Um, and so we're advocating for a safer way to store that, that waste. I mentioned the thickness of the, um, the containers used in Germany and Japan. Ah, in Germany and Japan, they use canisters that are between 9 and 18 inches thick, 
solid steel. And at Fukushima, when the terrible uh, earthquake and tsunami happened, the one thing that survived at Fukushima was their dry cask storage facility. They didn't leak, uh, they didn't break apart, uh, and they're still there. And those were the, I think they were 18 inch thick um, steel. And so we're not completely certain about the end result of what kind of uh, canister we want, but we know that we can improve on what's out there now. And then, okay, back to the panel. There are people, there's somebody from a land conservancy, there's someone from the schools, there's someone, um, a biologist, there's someone from state parks, um, all kinds of different areas of interest because the other thing is that the land out there is very, very valuable um, and desirable. It's one of the most beautiful coastlines in the whole world probably. And so that's going to be a very big, uh, what? <laughs> a big thing when that land comes up for grabs. But we have to decontaminate the area before um, before building can go on there. So it's you know it's a it's a very very complex. They got themselves into a very complex situation by choosing to build a nuclear power plant there, and now they have to live with the consequences of it, and they have to do it responsibly. Um, and so that is what I feel my my role on this panel is. And I hope the pan. We've only had one meeting. Um, and that was a day-long tour out at Diablo Canyon, and so the panel itself hasn't had a chance to really hunker down and meet. Um, but that's coming up, and it's we're, we'll be meeting monthly. Um, there'll be open meetings for the public. Our first meeting is on May 30th. It's at the uh, County Government Center uh, at 6 p.m. It goes from 6 to 9 p.m., and um, at that time we will look at the charter of the panel and um, discuss it and either approve or disapprove it. My feeling is that it will be approved. Um, and then we'll go from there. Then the work will start. The fir this first meeting is kind of introductory, but all of the meetings will be open to the public. How do we get a hold of you? Uh, of what? How do we get a hold of Mother of San Luis Obispo? Oh, Mothers for Peace? Mothersforpeace.org. Okay, uh, we have a great website. And then they can email us by And uh, you can, con there's a little clicky thing you can go onto at the website and say, it says contact us, and we'll get your email and respond. Okay? okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you Jane. And I just want to scan <clears throat> what we're talking about here. Here is the, this is where the entrance of Diablo Canyon is, and this beautiful, area and um, there's the Pacific Ocean and this is where it goes into and there's Port San Luis so it affects a lot of people and a lot of things and thank God for these women who show up no matter what love life and life will love you back bye bye for now